when it comes to networking and opportunity, there's always going to be a, an element about it that's uncomfortable. I think even if you're an introvert, find a way to connect to people that makes you comfortable. When you're in a blind panic, in this world of instant gratification, remind yourself that your career will be defined like when, when, it, when you're looking back on it over many, many years. Don't ever let anyone tell you there needs to be an expiration on your dreams. All right, hi, I'm Carrie Holland um, and I'm a producer, uh, which I understand, as I said earlier, is one of the most ambiguous of all the uh, uh, crew members or, or production jobs that exist. Um, I've spent the past 20 years basically working uh, across all platforms at this point. Uh, commercials, music videos, feature films, doc. Uh, at this point, I've kind of worn almost every hat that one can as a producer. If you were to ask me what my most, my most valuable asset is in general, it's my network. It's, it's the people that I've met and, and maintained relationships along the way. Um, to me, is there one most important person for a cinematographer to be networking with? I'm going to say it's the director because that's who, if, if I have to pick one. So uh, to start, I would say the director because I think that um, that relationship and that choreography is the most intimate of relationships that they're going to have. That said, I've always been a firm believer when it comes to building your network, get to know everyone um, and take the time. You know, producers are going to be important in that role. But yeah, certainly I would say the directors, uh, your producers, and then for sure in the short format world to production companies because, you know, they're the ones that are, are making a lot of those decisions. When it comes to networking and opportunity, there's always going to be a, an element about it that's uncomfortable. You know, I'm someone who's extremely extroverted. I'm very comfortable, you know, reaching out, being rejected. It's, you know, that's part of the advice. One of the other questions is, you know, what things that you've learned along the way. I think, I think even if you're an introvert, find a way to connect to people that makes you comfortable. So is it, hey, seeking out some of these directors you really want to work with, maybe not just asking them for coffee, sending them your body of work or some of your ideas and giving them something specific to connect on, right? I often find I get asked like, I want 15 minutes of your time, which generally I'm always happy to give, but I love it when someone says to me, you know, I'd really love to connect with you because this is what I'm trying to achieve and I'd love your advice on how to do that, where it's, it's more pointed. So if you want to talk to a director, I would say be bold. Like, I'd love to work with you. I'd love to just get on your radar. Um, or I'd love your, if it's, if it's feedback you're after, if it's um, wanting to try and connect with them to work with them specifically, if it's wanting to connect with them to get an introduction to the production company they're at, just be direct, ask, you know, I think it's okay to just kind of say what you want and, and get it out there or even share your work and then be mindful of how often you do it, right? So if you just finish shooting something that you're really excited and like, don't, necessarily just send them everything you're doing and be like, wanted you to check out this. I just did this, you know, wait for it to be something that you're really, really excited to put in front of them that you think they're going to pay attention to. Uh, the arc of a career, in my opinion, is is just that it's, it's going to do this. It's actually going to do this. You know, it's going to it's there's going to be major peaks and valleys. And something that I'm terrible, terrible at is being patient. <laughs> Um, but I've learned now in all my time that the one, the one thing that remains to be true is that it really just does take time. You know, when you say, what do I need to do? Or when you're in a blind panic in this world of instant gratification, remind yourself that your career will be defined like when, when, it, when you're looking back on it over many, many years and decisions and opportunities and failures and successes, not the one that's immediately in front of you. So feeling stuck and feeling like you're not getting where you wanna be. I, okay, so some of the best advice I can give. So now I'm 20 years into it. You know, I started making my first short film at 24. I just turned 44. You have to settle in and get comfortable with that feeling because it's gonna, it's gonna hit you a few times, more than a few times over your career. 
One of the best pieces of advice I can give is that you, again, it's, it comes back to that time and putting in your time, which is you, you have to remember that it's not going to happen overnight. It might not happen in the timeline that you've built for yourself of when it's supposed to happen. Stop creating those. It's great to have goals, manifest, wish. But if I could look at the arc of my career, you know, I actually thought I was like a big, amazing producer in my 20s. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I knew how to get anyone in a room. I could get anyone on the phone. I could get in all the right places, but I was missing so many of the tangible skills that now make me a good and successful producer. And it was like, you know, when you're stuck, the best advice I can give, find something that you love to sink your teeth into. Let it be a project, someone that you want to connect with, like shift your focus to get out of your rut. And I've done this so many times where I'm like, okay, fine. It's not working for me. Um, I'm going to go and connect with, you know, whichever one of my contacts. And let's just start talking about what we can create together. But remind yourself that the road is long and it's, you know, again, I'm 44. I just feel like I'm starting to get somewhere. Um, and so my advice is like, if you're feeling this in your twenties, you should be because you haven't put in the time. If you're feeling this in your thirties, you know, I get it. And you, you might feel like you should be farther ahead, but again, it, it there's still more that you're going to need to do to get there. And, and, and some people will have already gotten there. Um, and then the, you're going to see people come up and down through their career too. Um, stay the course, don't give up and continue to find things that you love um, to make you feel excited again or inspired again, even if they fall aside because the next gig or the next job comes. So I, I guess part of my advice is you're going to get stuck. Um, you're going to hit the highs and you're going to hit the lows. Try and like, try and not let your ego drive, um, where you're going next, you know, just know that it's getting you somewhere. Each one of those things is going to get you to the next thing. I think there's so many things that make a good cinematographer. So of course, first you have to have that eye and you have to know, you know, you, you've got to have the thing that your job, you're kind of the connective tissue between everything that's happening behind that fourth wall and what's happening on the camera. You're the, you're the linchpin, you know, the director is of course overseeing all these micro decisions and macro decisions, but as the DP, like you're the, you're the person who is in between what's happening and what we're seeing. Um, so of course the creative and the eye is one. Um, how you treat people and your team, you know, you're the commander in chief in so many ways as well. Um, and I say this to everyone, I obviously want to work with the most talented, but if you're going to be um, not nice to work with, you're going to move further down the list and it's going to be a it's going to be part of my decision that combined with also your understanding of how to problem solve as a dp those three things uh are what make a great dp so for example you know it's my job is to oversee every single department so you know art camera grip lighting uh, you know the actors craft locations. I'm running 138 line items and departments where every single one of them is fighting for time or money. And as an independent producer, I often am short on both. Um, where I find a DP as, as an ally is if all of a sudden I have to make decisions, my AD is going to want more time. My art doesn't have enough to maybe transform the, the, the location into exactly the vision that the director has. I know that no matter what, I can count on my DP and say, okay, you know, I need more time. Let's look at this shoot. H how do we, how do we rejig this? My AD says, I need a whole other day. I don't have it. Can you cover these scenes in this way? Yes or no. You know, maybe with the art department in that location, I can count on my DP and say, can you shoot it another way? Can you switch the lenses, depth of field? Can you turn the camera a little bit? Can you help me solve that problem? So when I think about my relationship to a DP, it's, it's to me, it's huge because I know that they can help me solve so many both creative, logistical timing problems. And it's, it's not lost on me. Um, that 
If you're a, a DP who understands where all the other departments and roles connect to yours, you're going to be able to help me do that in a, in a meaningful way. And that's huge for a producer. Listen, it is the best of times and the worst of times. It is the most beautiful, intoxicating, um, addictive business, but it's also really unforgiving and at oftentimes really can be cruel. Um, so I think you have to really work on your ability, uh, you know, this touches upon what would happen, what we talked about earlier, to just ride it out the ups and downs and know that there's going to be many highs and many lows and and just keep going you know it's a business it's art and commerce like i my job is literally the intersection of where art and commerce connect you know it's like there's all the creativity and most of the people who i'm are on the crew are part of that creative connective tissue but then there's all the executives and the distribution and the money people that have a bottom line to answer to so keep in mind as much as it's it's art there's somebody who's paying for it and, and it's a business. So again, find the things that, you, that make you happy and give you the creative satisfaction and remember that you're part of an industry, you know? Um, and like most industries, it's, it's, a, it's capitalistic and uh, sometimes the decisions are driven by money and sometimes they're driven by creative. And don't let what feels like a failure be the thing that knocks you over, just do it again. I, again, like I was so against being in advertising or music or this job or that job. I thought I was the ultimate failure. I was like, why am I not, you know, Bruckheimer? I don't understand, you know, but I was 29. And as a woman and to all my, you know, female directors and producers, I remember going to see Christine Vachon, who's one of my idols, killer films. She's the producer of like Boys Don't Cry. I remember going to see her speak before I had kids and this is way before, you know, Me Too movement or when you, you were starting to see a lot more female directors. And she's like, yeah, there's no female directors. It's really hard to be a female director and have a family. Like the, not only is the opportunity not there, but that juggling act is really challenging. You know, so I remember sitting with a mentor of mine, this woman, Louise Spinner, and I had, you know, a two, two and a half year old at home her and I were sitting on a patio. She, she was Channing Tatum's agent forever. She plucked him out of obscurity, built his career. And she's been very generous to me. You talk about connections. She's literally my fairy godmother. And I'm nursing a baby and I'm crying. And I'm saying to her, like, why is it so hard for me to get a movie made? Now she's got three kids and she was older than me. So she had more perspective and she's laughing. I'm literally leaking out of every orifice of my body. I'm holding a newborn baby and I'm wondering why I'm not getting a movie made. And she's like, you're trying to make a $25 million movie that's probably going to go nowhere. And she's like, why don't you start with like a Canadian indie film? You know, she's like, why don't you just rethink this a little and also remind yourself you're nursing a baby right now. It might just not, it just might not be your time. Um, so remember to put all the factors that are happening in your life into the equation of why you may or may not be getting there and, you know, and just keep going. Just don't ever let anyone, I guess my last bit of advice is don't ever let anyone tell you there needs to be an expiration on your dreams. Whatever you have to do to get there and keep going, do it and, and, and you'll get there.